To give a little introduction to Venezuela, uh, 30 to 40 years ago, Venezuela was the richest country in Latin America on a per capita GDP basis. Uh, it was also a net exporter of food. It has larger oil reserves than Saudi Arabia. But today we find Venezuela in a position where the average Venezuelan in 2017 lost over 11 kilos. There are weeks this year where the whole Venezuela, uh, Venezuelan country has had no electricity. Uh, there are no more pets or zoos left in Venezuela because all those animals uh, have been eaten. Uh, Inflation is sometimes over a million percent. Uh, and we're gonna find out uh, what led to it and where does Venezuela go from here. So what I wanna do right now is hand it over to Daniel, who we brought in to explain this all to us. Um, and he's gonna tell us what happened and maybe be about his experience uh, growing up in Venezuela. Yeah, that sounds good. Thank you for inviting me. Now, uh, I, as you said, I lived in Venezuela most of my life. I am originally from there. Uh, and I came to Australia on a rather rush um, scenarios in 2010 and since then I have been here. Um, I'm not sure exactly how much of an expert I am but however since I have been politically involved and active both in my homeland as well as here for over 10-12 years I might be able to give you some insight. Um, so there's a lot of misconception and uh, not necessarily misinformation, but rather conflicting information as to what happened in my country, how did it land there, and exactly what is to blame to it. Depending on who you are in the spectrum, uh, politically speaking, uh, it could be from the CIA just meddling in the government to this is just what happens when you try socialism to somewhere in between, none of them at all, or all of them together. Um, and to an extent, there's all of these scenarios have some sort of truth. Um, however, I have felt, and a lot of my uh, people have felt, that it's not really doing a service to understand what's happening in Venezuela if you do not understand the culture and the reasons of as to why we landed there. So, in order to sort of comprehend this, we have to take a step back at two, about uh, 20, 40 years. When, as you mentioned, Venezuela was at, at its peak, uh, economically speaking. We are having um, reference to the 1980s, 1970s, where Venezuela not only was the, um, the highest growth in economy in the whole of Latin America, it was competing with the tiger economies of the time in Indonesia, Malaysia, South Korea, in regards to its growth. Um, we also had, as you mentioned uh, correctly, net export in food and one of our biggest exports was also uh, crude oil uh, in which uh, our country has over 20% of the world reserves alone. Um, so definitely that created a big boom at the time, economically speaking. However, when this sort of started happening, it wasn't uh, entirely societally uh, growing as it should have. At this period of time in Venezuela, we were under a um, very conservative uh, dictatorship um, under the self-appointed ruler of the country, um, Pérez Jiménez. Uh, he ruled not only with a narrow fist, uh, imposing martial law whenever he felt like it, uh, but also there was a considerable amount of corruption in between the governments. In fact, uh, unfortunately, corruption is a taint a fixture of not only my country but a lot of Latin American countries because of the history of what we have led. And another important thing to recognize and understand is that Venezuela had been going back and forth between progressive, relatively progressive to uh, considerably conservative uh, leaders since around 1900. We had been throughout a 60 period, 60 year period uh, through two different dictatorships. Uh, that had to be overthrown with a military coup. Um, and this was not different. Uh, but there were always just two parties. It was AD and Coupe. It was it. Uh, so it was either choosing between one and the other. As you have seen in the rest of the world, uh, if you try this for enough times, um, the public, the people, grow discontent with it and start trying to find uh, different approaches. It doesn't necessarily have to be a good one, it's just a different one. And this is where Chavez came into place. Chavez, uh, around the 1990s, uh, was a 
low general of the army, uh, also studied politics in one of the most prominent uh, universities in Venezuela. So by no means he is a um, ignorant person. By contrary to it, uh, by far he is one of the most um, strategic and charismatic leaders that Venezuela has had in a very long time. With a lot of flaws, and trust me, I don't particularly like the guy. However, credit credits you. Um, he and a very short group of uh, milita uh, military uh, organizers who were discontent with the government at the time, in, around 1995, uh, tried to stage a coup uh, in the capital. Obviously failed, Chavez went into prison, but, and this is where the cultures are coming into place and you start trying to understand, well, why did we choose this person? Because we're coming from a country that was essentially liberated by a strongman, uh, our, um, back when we gained our independence, it was Simon Bolivar, who not only uh, freed us from uh, the grip that Spain had in Venezuela, but also Colombia, Peru, Bolivia, and Ecuador. And he also worked very closely to uh, aid in the independence of Panama, Mexico, uh, Argentina, and Chile. So definitely that um, characteristic of that perception of what a leader should be, it's deeply ingrained in what we connect to. And Chavez at the time showed some of those scenarios. Um, after he was uh, out of prison in 1998, he ran for presidency uh, on, a po on a platform of populism, on a platform of not being that person that was either from one party or another, but rather an outsider. Um, he ran on a promise to crack down on corruption. He ran on a promise to bring back the glory days of Venezuela. And I don't know if you noticed, there's some similarities to a number of um, leaders in, uh, in the world at this moment. So obviously the rest of Venezuela is seen around the world, the rise of these popular leaders. If you know the left or the right, that's irrelevant. It's something that worries us. Um, but at the start, Chavez wasn't all bad. My family never voted for him. I was definitely young enough to not even notice what was happening. But he wasn't a particularly bad leader, where he had the fortune and the, uh, the adequate time in uh, the global economy that not only Venezuela had very strong ties with the United States, and the United States had decided to stage another war because the United States. Uh, so they required a lot of oil, which we um, obviously provided, that increased our economy significantly, uh, becoming a very prominent um, economy in the early 2000s. He was extremely popular. Uh, to the point where I started seeing in the early 2000, 2001 that his popularity stopped being connected to his capacity to govern and just his sheer charisma. And that's when things started becoming uh, a bit array. Right. There were obviously obvious people in the opposition disagreeing with his policies, his, his view for whatever reason. And in 2001, well, in 2000, with the um, price of oil considerably dropping from about $160 a barrel to uh, just under $100. At this point in time, our economy was 98% based on the price of the oil. That was our main export. And with that, the country started going into obviously a recession. This sparked uh, protests and unrest because people were struggling. And this is where things started becoming um, problematic, and that's what changed to what we see right now. In 2001, there was an attempted coup at the president. He was uh, successfully evicted for about a day. Um, and a lot of protests happened in the country. There was hope for change, or for whatever reason, or anger for these, uh, going back to this uh, cycle. And that's when my story starts because that's the first time in my personal history that I start, I recognize or remember political involvement and unrest. I wasn't there, I was, it was 2001, so I must have been like, what, age seven? My family, however, was. My father and my mother were in that protest in the streets because they never agreed with the policies of Chavez and they were exercising their free right to express that. Um, with the coup and the government um, 
of the time being stepped down for a little time, the government's reaction, that's the first time that it showed its true face. That was the first time in our recent history that we had seen the military going against our people, uh, shooting us with tear gas, with rubber bullets, uh, dispersing as it was arrived. Not only that, in the um, now infamous Yaguno incident, there was a shooter that was uh, in favor of the government that was overthrown, uh, in favor of Chavez that not only opened fire towards the people, and my family among them, because my mother and father was, were there when the shooting started, but also that person was protected by the police and later became a member of government. That's when things started changing and that's when things happening. And in my personal experience, I remember two to three years ago when my father came about to tell me what had happened, because I didn't see them that day, I only saw them after, is that they were near the Yaguna Bridge when the incident started occurring, when this person started opening fire on the peaceful protesters the police protected him and started trying tear gas. My mother had an allergic reaction to the tear gas and went into an asthma attack. Uh, my father tried to rush her, but obviously with everyone running, it was a very difficult situation. And in my father's words, um, it was essentially almost it for my mother. Were it not for the fact that there was a group within the protesters that was peaceful up until that point in time because they knew they had some inclination or they were aware of that being a possibility and they were prepared. That it was a public, um, back then, was an actual political party and groups from the political party from the far left called Red Flag, Bandera Roja. They were prepared and they knew that that was a possibility and as soon as that happened and Yet later, when I had the privilege of first seeing them in action, I have never seen in my life someone so prepared to face that level of brutality. There were people that they were in a line together. As soon as the protest started, they dispersed. They had um, masks to protect themselves from the tea gas. They had buckets full of urine that apparently turns off the tear gas immediately, something that no one knew. They had asthma medication for people to take there. They had uh, motorcycles around to rush people to hospital straight away. They were the people that saved my mother. That's essentially my connection to the militant left of, the, of Venezuela. But since then, when Chavez got into power pretty much straight away. And that's when it started becoming, from, uh, going from that being a sporadic incident once in a lifetime to become a staple of the government. And as Chavez became more paranoid, he also became somehow more charismatic to his people that turned from being a populist leader to almost a fanatic leader, akin to the perception and the love that the Nazis had for Hitler. And I'm not trying to make that connection on the basis of comparing those two groups, no, by no means. It's more of that, um, devotion to a leader that it changes from just being you are a good leader to I will follow you everywhere. And uh, with that, he this obviously power eventually corrupts, and that amount of power corrupts absolutely. More corruption, more um, violations, and whilst he tried to continuously pursue his progressive agenda, uh, and he was rather efficient at it in the face of it. People adore him, his popularity came up. His policies, economically wise, were only tied to oil. And as the economy of oil started waning, um, he started making more and more enemies around the world. And that's when we started seeing the roots as to what you quoted becoming. That is honestly the very, like, very short version of of the steps and the circumstances that occurred that only makes sense in a culture because it's connected to a culture that led to him becoming a